four categories are chemical, physical or mechanical, uh, biological, uh, mainly in the form of mold, and also um, uh, metal corrosion. But the one that is very important for libraries and archives is uh, the category which we call natural aging. Um, sometimes we call it spontaneous chemical deterioration. And that is caused by long-term, slow chemical reactions between the material and air and moisture. And some examples of that that we have here illustrate that point very clearly and illustrate how environment plays a role in determining what condition our collections arrive to the future in. Here are two books. These are actually books that are intended for printers to show them the ranges of paper available. And we have our books open to a page that is made of newsprint. Now this book was printed in 1950. It's 60 years old. And the paper is the same in both cases. We're open to the same page. One of these books was kept in a relatively good environment where the combined influence of temperature and moisture uh, overall in the long term was less. And that meant in reality that it was a combination of cooler temperatures and lower relative humidities overall. And you can see that the paper, although it is somewhat discolored at the edges, is still in good condition, relatively speaking. This other copy of the book was in a different environment. It's more deteriorated very clearly, more discolored, and I suspect more brittle as well. And that is in, was in environments that overall had a higher average temperature and higher average moisture content. It's this long-term, slow, internal, spontaneous uh, chemical reactions that we lump together under the category of decay called natural aging. And uh, some of the other consequences of natural aging in paper are very evident from this book. Um, yes, one could blame the materials and say this wasn't made with a rag or very good quality paper to start with. But even so, um, these slow deteriorative chemical changes have, um, have resulted in brittleness of the book. This little fragment broke off and it's easy to see that other fragments have broken off in the past. This is a, uh, a result of reactions that occurred over time spontaneously. And, and the root causes of this are chemical, not physical. Um, and therefore, we, we, we cite these as examples of chemical deterioration. Um, a very dramatic and impressive example of chemical deterioration is this uh, cellulose acetate, negative from the 1930s from the New York City Municipal Archives. And um, as soon as I take this tissue off, and you'll recognize, um, well, certainly that it's not in very good condition as a photographic negative. What you might not realize is that the underlying cause of this was a reaction between the plastic support, the cellulose acetate, and um, air and moisture that resulted in uh, the shrinkage of the plastic. The gelatin layer, the emulsion layer, was not shrinking when the plastic was, so it had no place to go, so that's why it's, it's buckled or channeled. But again, this is an example of chemical deterioration or natural aging. This occurred, this occurred spontaneously. It wouldn't have occurred if this negative had not experienced a combination of temperatures and humidities over time that uh, did not lead to such a fast rate of deterioration that 70 years later, after this negative was made, it's in the condition that it's in. And that's our basic philosophy with natural aging or chemical deterioration, is prevention.